Hello, welcome back. DJ Vic Vapor with you. Going through that Bitwig Studio 2 modulators course. And in this tutorial, it's going to be a little bit longer than the other sessions because there's a kind of little grab bag kind of uh, little slices of modulators that are real easy to explain. So I didn't want to waste like 30 second uh, videos on them. We'll just do them all at once. So let's take a look at what some of those are from the website here on the Bitwig. I will go here. So we've done a lot of the ones you see up top here, but some of the ones I was skipping is like the Macro 4, the Macro, Math, MIDI, Mix, Select 4, and then a couple of these down here are basically XY pads, but they just have 4, you know, so they call it a Vector 4, and then they have 8 spots to modulate or assign, so called a Vector 8, and then your standard XY. Real easy stuff to understand. I mean, it really doesn't take a tutorial to show you, but might as well do it since we're putting together a course for the uh, modulators. So um, the Macro 4, and we'll just kind of go over some of the basic explanations here. And we've got the expressions, too, that I'll probably do. A couple of them, actually. Envelope follower. Some of these are real easy to understand. Once you pull them in, you kind of get what's going on. Macro 4, just four macro knobs to modulate, uh, a simple mac one simple macro knob. Math is going to be adding and subtracting, you know, a minimum and maximum to parameters that you can assign. And then the MIDI one is more for external hardware. It's going to allow you to have any uh, incoming MIDI signal or pitch bend or aftertouch or anything like that. can be part of the thing that modulates... Uh, whatever parameters you want and the mix is pretty simple it's got a crossfade and then it's got an up and down kind of deal right there we'll take a look at select four is just four different um, assignable spots and then you can fade up and down between them with the um, control there and then we've got these guys we'll go over let's see if I missed anything I don't think so if I did we'll probably find it inside bitwig so let's go up Back to Bitwig, and I've got a little bass line and drum beat. And let's just kind of make some noise here and see what we can come up with. So what do we want to do here? Let's get, let's get this guy open. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it closed. Let's, uh, let's find some other cool little deals to work with here as far as effects. Um, what can we find? It'd be fun. Audio effect. What do we got? Some of this may work, some may not. So, bass rider stereo. Since we're working with a bass track, let's see if we can get this guy going. Well, actually, it's going to do it automatically, so I don't need to. That was a bad choice. Come on. Get with the program. All right, what are we going to do here? I tend to stick with the easy ones because, you know, delays and things like that just make things pretty simple to see what's happening. Um, I guess that's what we can do. Delay. Grab that guy. And let's start goofing around here. So what do we got? We haven't gone over. We got the button on and off. So that guy, that's it. There's nothing else to open up, nothing else to look at. You can just turn things on and turn things off. So let's uh, go over it. Let's assign it to um, the mix. And you can see here I'm just turning it on and off. Alright, so we will get rid of that guy. Let's add buttons, which is just an AB, sort of the same concept. But now we can assign two and we can go back and forth, so we don't need to really do that guy. Expressions. Um, here you can add uh, velocity, timber, 
release and pressure and you can assign those four things to a knob and then depending on uh, how they're affected within your track um, they'll modulate the source here this hardware CV uh, I guess we can look at it I don't have any external hardware to really plug into it but you can actually use an external audio source or an external hardware device as the input source to modulate things from so if I had an input assigned I could probably do it with my microphone I could probably assign my microphone and just my voice could become the audio source to modulate with but once you've um, in your preferences assigned an input or an audio input then you can find it here in the drop down and you can have your gain and smooth and ACDC and then I'll go ahead and assign you know whatever parameter or whatever device you're working with so that one's those are pretty cool I just don't have anything external to fire them up and show us anything about so what do we got here macro 4 again that's the uh, four assignable macros and then I don't need to assign you I just want to open no, I can assign you here and then you've got them here once you open it up you can go in and you know dial things up so pretty simple stuff there useful but real simple some of these really don't take a genius to figure out math we can take a peek at that guy math is simply let's go with feedback and then you've got your minimum and maximum values here can multiply, add, subtract, minimize, maximize. So you can see me going up here and going back here. So it's adding one and subtracting the other and vice versa. Pretty creative little tool right there to work with. And what else do we got over here? Uh, note sidechain. I found this one pretty interesting to work with. Let's add this to the uh, delay again. And then what you can do is you can say I want the notes from any other channel that you have in the project to be the source. Not really like the audio side chain. It's more you can more or less use notes. So I could go to blue two, blue two. And I'm basically allowing it to side chain itself. Use it as itself. So if I put another MIDI channel in, or another instrument track and brought in, uh, or I don't even have to bring anything in, I can just type in some junk here. That could be the new source. Let's go back here. And let's say instrument three is the source. So these notes are going to now come in and allow me to have a, those as the side chain to the delay. And then you can set your attack. So that that for me was would probably be one way of really utilizing the note side chain. You can come in here and specifically put a pattern in that you want as that modulating source to a parameter. So note side chain. What else do we got on our list here that we haven't covered? The vectors, the XY pad. Again, I'll let you take a look at it, but it's pretty straightforward. You can assign all these to multiple parameters. Let's see here. That guy. And then you've got your ability to scroll around between them. And you can even assign this to one of the other devices and have it being modulated and then modulating up to uh, three, six, eight, you know, parameters on some other device. So this is kind of a rabbit hole. You can really get lost in utilizing something like that. So a lot of fun to be had, a lot of killer presets to, to be coming, I'm sure, with the, the creative uh, minds that are out there. 
let's see, I think we got mix and MIDI left. Let's take a look at MIDI first. MIDI is going to allow us to sign, assign an incoming MIDI source or pressure. So the pressure, if you hit a keyboard or if you're using a MP3 controller or MIDI, you know, something that's sending MIDI signal in, whatever pressure you're applying to the pads or the source can be the part of the uh, modulation. And then bend wheel, if you have a bend wheel on an external keyboard or something like that. So that is the uh, MIDI. And you just assign whatever the incoming note is right here. What was the other one we needed to look at? Let's see. Mix. I think so, yeah. Mix. Pretty cool. So you've got an A, B, and then a crossfade. So we can, again, go back here. And then we can say this one wants to be down. This one wants to be up. And then you can crossfade between the two. And you can see, you can see here it's going left and right as I do that. So if you think about when I'm going through these kind of quick and easy, these littler ones, these guys are assignable. For instance, let's go with like, uh, um, let's go with something like classic LFO, which we've already looked at, but now we can assign this guy to the classic LFO. And now you see it moving back and forth and, and, you know, depending on all this off of the LFO. I could even continue to assign these guys, get even more variety going here. So that's kind of the um, the idea here is to really think about these things in conjunction, not just individual um, tools, but tools that work well together and really can um, open up the uh, creative aspects of your project. So I'm making sure on the list here that I didn't miss anything. I think we've covered everything of value of some of these. Like I said, you can open them up and see if I haven't covered it. It's pretty straightforward, but thanks for joining me on the course. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next Bitwig Studio 2 tutorial. Peace.